Hello, parents. Thanks for joining me on this episode of the Fast Math Freebies at Home Edition. Do you have a third, fourth, or fifth grader live in the state of Florida and want to help your child prepare for the Fast Math Assessment in May? Well, if you're answering yes to all three of those questions, you are in the right place. My name is Miss McCarthy, and I am a former Florida public school teacher on a mission to make math fun, make it click, and make it stick. For years, I've been creating resources with teachers in mind. And now I'm expanding my impact to create affordable and engaging math video lessons and practice for you to use at home with your child. The following free episode is actually a part of a free course. So all you have to do is click the link in the description box, enroll in the course today, and you'll have access to all of the fast math freebies, the video lessons, and the printables for this grade. And now it's time to dive into that free episode. So let's do it. All right, third grade, here is your problem for this week. So go ahead and pause the video and try it on your own and make sure you throw down your best effort. Then when you're ready, come on back and let's check your work. Welcome back third grade, let's go ahead and go over it. So it says to select all, which means that we need to try all of the answer choices. Select all of the equations, they have equal signs. You'll notice all of the equations down here have equal signs. That's why they are called equations. So select all of the equations that are represented in the array below. Well, this right here is the array. An array is represented by columns and rows with an equal amount in each row. All right, so let's see what we've got here. We have one, two, three, four going down, four X's going down. And then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven going across. Okay, so I'm going to create all the equations that I know that this could be and then go over and select all of the equations. So I know that it could be four rows of seven, which equals a total of 28, very good. We can also flip flop those factors and use the commutative property, which would be seven times four equals 28. Awesome. So that's our fact family for multiplication. Now we need our fact families for division. So we need two division fact families there that are represented in this array because multiplication and division are inverse operations. So for division, we need the dividend first, the total first. And how many X's did we have in all? 28, right? So our dividend for both of these is going to be 28. Now we can make it 28 divided by four or seven, right? Let's go ahead and do four. 28 divided by four equals seven, and 28 divided by seven equals four. You got it. All right, now we have all of our equations that are represented. Let's go over here and match them up. So for the first one, it says 28 times four equals N. Do we have 28 rows or 28 columns? No, we have 28 total amount. So this one right here, the 28 is in the wrong place right there. So we can eliminate the first choice. The next one, four times N equals 28. So four times N, N right there is a variable. And is, N is the variable for all of these. And N in this case represents which value? Seven, right? Four times seven, that's this one right here. Four times seven equals 28 where the value of n equals seven. So we can go ahead and keep this answer choice. Now we have, for the next one, 28 divided by four. 28 divided by four equals n. Do you see something like that? Yeah, right here, 28 divided by four equals seven, where seven is the value of n in this case. Okay, that's just the unknown amount even though we do know it <laughs> because we can count how many columns there are. So we can go ahead and keep this one. The next one says seven divided by 28. Did we have seven total X's that we divided into 28 columns or rows? No, this right here, the seven is not the dividend. It is not the total. 
This should be 28 going first. So what can we do with this one? Eliminate it or keep it? Let's eliminate it. And then the final one, n times seven equals 28. So n here, the value would be four. Do we have something that says four times seven equals 28? Yeah, right up here, right? We've already marked that one, so we can go ahead and keep that one. Now we've done all the work. We have three that we have kept, three answer choices that we have kept. We've done all the work. What do we need to make sure that we do? Check the boxes, right? So when you're on the computer, you would just put checks on these boxes right here and make sure it's right there with the ones that you've chosen. So we've selected all, and that is how you work out a problem like this. So go ahead and make sure you make any notes that you still need to make, and then let's close out this video for the week. Thank you so much for joining me today. And remember, if you're looking for the principle that goes along with this video, you can enroll in that free course today, which gives you access to this video and the printable and all the other videos that I've created, the Fast Math freebie episodes, all in one place for you. And you know what? If you're anything like me, it's out of sight out of mind. I know that you're busy. So why don't you go ahead and do that now? That way it's off your plate. You take care of it and you can get your instant access today. Thanks again. And I cannot wait to see you inside the free course.